Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Well, it's an honor to be in the presence of God and to stand before his people today. Amen. We want to say thank you to Bishop Dr. Jimmy Kimani and Mom Pastor Alice. And we want to say happy Father's Day to Bishop Jimmy Kimani. All right. And happy Father's Day to every father that's seated in the pews. Turn to your father next to you and tell them happy Father's Day. Oh, please don't be afraid. Turn to another and tell them happy. <laughs> amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. All right. Genesis chapter 12. Genesis chapter 12. We're going to read it together in the name of the Lord. Genesis chapter 12. From verse 1, we're going to go all the way to verse 4. I'm reading in the New King James Version. And we're going to read together. One, two, let's read. Now the Lord had said to Abram, get out of your country, from your family, and from your father's house, to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation, I will bless you and make your name great, and you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse him who curses you, and in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So Abram departed as the Lord had spoken to him. And Lot went with him, and Abram was 75 years old when he departed from Aaron. Father, we ask you to speak to us in accents clear and still. It will not miss your voice today in Jesus' name. Amen. God is speaking to Abram before the name change, and he's telling him, get out of your country. Get out not just from your country, get out also from your family. Not just from your country and your family, get out also from your father's house and go to a land that I will show you. See, it's interesting as I read this, every time I read this, it's interesting that God is saying to Abraham, do not, he's not saying to him, get out um, from Haran and go to um, a land like Ai, for instance. Or he's not telling him, get up from here and go to Bethel. Or he's not telling him, get up from here and go to Zimmerman. He's saying to Abram, get out from Haran and go to a place that I will show you. You see, that looks like it's not a complete picture. And when you know the way God is from the beginning when he speaks to man in Genesis, when he says to him in verse 28 of Genesis chapter 1, that fill the earth, multiply, have dominion, subdue. He's giving man a clear instruction. He's telling man, this is what your assignment is. Every time throughout scripture when God is calling a man, when he has his hand on somebody, he's giving them clear instructions because God is clear. In him there is no darkness. In him there is no confusion. The spirit of God is a spirit of order. So when God gives instruction, he gives a clear instruction. There is clarity in God. But when he's giving this instruction, he's giving this instruction and it looks like it's not complete. But this is on purpose. I was sharing earlier and I said, um, in, 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 the ropes, in the ropes department, the ropes ministry, one of our counselors, who is a member here, um, gave us an example, gave us a story some time back. I, I, I will try and remember it in full. But she said to us that she has a house technician in the house. Uh, and she said this one time she left instructions to the, to the technician and said to her, uki pika chakula kata viazi marambili. I think ndio waweze kutoa viazi, hapendi viazi ye. Ndio waweze kutoa, lakini wale wengine wanapenda viazi. So akasema kata viazi mara. Marambili. So when she came back in the evening, akakuja akapata viazi vimeja kwa chakula. Tu vipande tudogo tudogo. So akamuita akamuliza, wait. So why didn't you follow the instructions? Nilikuambi ukate viazi marambili. Akasema nilikata marambili. Nilikata hivi na nikakata hivi. Marambili. And the lady was saying kata marambili, kata hivi, ikue maramoja, marambili. Like cut in half. All right? And so she was asking, so who is it that had the problem? Was it the technician or was it her? Of course, we will have mixed reactions. Some of us will say it was her, some of us will say it was the technician. But the point she was putting across and she said to us was that communication is said to have happened when what I have said and what you have understood is the same thing. All right? And every time you find yourself at some place 
in your life where you don't understand what is happening, this is it. God's communication to us. You go right back and understand. Is this what God said? Is this what I have understood? You're asking, Holy Spirit of God, please help me that what you have said and what I have understood is the same thing. So that you're not just taking the word and doing with it whatever you want. Or you're saying, So you, you know you are right, correct. But that's not what God meant. In, she was telling us communication is said to have happened when what you have said and what you have understood is what? Is the same thing. So when you read scripture, every time God gives instructions, his instructions are clear. There is no way you can read the Bible and leave there confused. Every time, they used to tell us in high school, every time when you read the Bible and you find that you are confused, you need to go back to that same thing and read it again. Because in God there is no confusion. Every time you feel like you've come to the service and then you're thinking, ah, your word is confused. Uh -uh. There's something absolutely wrong because the word does not confuse. God in his speaking does not confuse. In him there is clarity. So when God is speaking and speaking to um, Abraham at this time and tells him, go to a land that I will show him, that is not, a, go to a land that I will show you. He's not telling him that um, you just go wherever. He has pinned it. it is, this is, I think, among the most specific instructions that you find right, right at the beginning of scripture as you start reading the Bible. Right at the beginning because it says to him, go to a land that I will show you. And then it says, I will make you a great nation. I will bless you. I will make your name great and you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and him that curses you I will also curse and in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Now, in other words, God was saying to Abraham, listen, you have to go to a place that I will show you. In other words, I am telling you, you cannot do this journey alone. You have to keep checking with me. Are we still together? Is this it? Most times we think that the place for us to start consulting whether God is with us, ama whether we're in the path of God, is when we get to a fork in the road. Most times we think that is it. But imagine that is not it. It is great to ask for that place. You know, when you come to the decision for, uh, for the young people, for instance, is who should I marry? Is it this one or is it this one? You know, that, that, that is a serious thing, so I need to consult God. That's great to do that. But also for the everyday ordinary things of life. Because that is what is our worship. Our worship is when we are going back to God and esteeming him as great, esteeming him as God. That's what the Bible says in the book of Romans 12. Therefore, in the message paraphrase, it says, here is what I want you to do. God helping you. Take your everyday ordinary life. You're eating, you're drinking, you're sleeping and place it before God as an offering. Because this is your spiritual act of worship. Your everyday ordinary life. So the time for us to go, for Abraham, this was his everyday ordinary life. Because God was telling him, from now on, you have left your people, you have left your assignment, you have left your nation, you have left your job, you have left everything, you're going to a place that I will show you. So there is a, your current preoccupation is to look to me and to listen to my instruction. Bonas if you so if this is true for Abraham, it would mean that whether he was at a fork in the road or whether he was just walking in a very straight, wide straight path, that Akuna Vinyange Potea, he would still have to constantly ask God, are we, are we there yet? Is this it? Because anywhere it could be it. God is the one that is saying. God is the one that is deciding where it is that we're going. If you have used Google Maps as you're driving or the navigation system, it will constantly tell you, for instance, if you're going somewhere near a roundabout, it will tell you, in 200 meters at the roundabout, take the second exit. Now, it is, if you've gone to driving school, most, more often than not, the first exit will be this one, the second exit is that one, the third exit is this one, and the fourth exit is this other one going back. But you have seen, I am sure, on these Nairobi roads and even in different places where the first exit is this one and there's another second exit there. It is going in that almost the same direction but not. And then there's the third exit that goes straight and then there's the fourth exit and then there's another exit. So imagine if you are not listening, if you don't know where you're going, so you have consulted Google, because you assume Google has been there before, because it, you know, literally, it kind of has been there before. So you're seated there and you're traveling with Google, you're asking for directions. And so it has told you, okay, in 700 meters, turn north. If we don't know where north is in Kenya, but you just go in that direction. You just, you just drive north. And so long as the path is right, I'm trying to paint a picture for the people maybe who have not used um, the, the system. And you don't have to use it when you're driving. I have used it when I was looking for Nyayo House sometime in town. Of course, I got terribly lost, but you know, I, I'm here, so you know I got found. 
But anyway, if you're using that Google Maps and you continue, um, you know when you get to the roundabout and it tells you take the second exit, you must be very keen to listen to what exit it is talking about. Because if you assume second exit in Akuanga, he usually second exit lazima ikuwe this direct one. Then you get to the roundabout that has this second exit. Have you seen those kinds of roundabouts, by the way? So that is where you're supposed to be going. And then you take this one. There are places where when you take that route, you almost have to go all the way to Moyale before you can find a turn to come back to where it is that you're going. You know? And it is exactly the same way when you're walking with God. My grandma used to tell us that when you give your life to Jesus, salvation is a journey for the traveler. Of course, it, it sounds better in, in, in our mother tongue. She used to say, Rugendo Rwa Mugendi. It is the journey of somebody who has decided they are going. And she used to tell us, you ka, always you ka kosa kujua mtu anasa. Msafiri, always you kosa kumjua. For instance, if you met me at the stage, there, standing the way I'm standing like this, and you ask, you will, it is just an easy, a quick, almost a sure bet, that um, I'm not going far. Sindio? Lakini ukipata na mimi nimebeba suitcase na suitcase nyingine inatoka na hii kitu na suitcase na suitcase unashindwa unaenda safari ya mbali unaenda wapi kwani Brian alafu upatane na mimi sasa niko na pick up imejaa vitu sema oh unahama you know those things will tell you that somebody is traveling it's the same thing for us in the journey of salvation now when god is speaking to abraham I want you to think for a second what it was like for abraham when the lord called him out and he's telling him, I want you to go out of your nation, out of your family, out of your people, out of your country. I want you to leave and go to a place that I'm going to show you. Imagine when Abraham was parking his property and a childhood friend was just passing by. Like, Abraham, can you enter? Think about his answer for a second. Because the Lord has not told him, Unenda apa. I'm going to a place that I will show you. So he's parking. He, how do you even know what to park? I want you to imagine yourself in that place for a second. If you are Abraham and the Lord is telling you, I want you to go to a place that I will show you, what do you pack? For those of you who have traveled anywhere, and that is really all of us, because if you've traveled to the village, you have traveled. When you're going for your Christmas, for instance, when almost everybody travels, and you pack up your things, you know you're going for three days, so you pack seven clothes if you're a lady, you pack two clothes if you're a guy. Sour. <laughs> You have factored in the climate, you're going to wash this one, this one, you know, that kind of thing. Depending on, you know, the kind of person that, that you are. So if you're traveling, when you know where you're going, you're able to, for those of you also, when you're traveling to a different place, you're asking yourself, what is the weather? Google has come to help us. So you just Google um, climate in um, Mauritius, for instance. And it tells you, okay, it's going to be like this. So you pack just summer clothes and then just one casueta, just in case, you know, in case kubadlike kwena kaupepo. Usipate off guard, vinye wengine tulipata off guard. All right. That is when you know where it is you're going. But imagine you're Abram. And he said to you, go to a place that I will show you. What do you pack? Who do you even ask to come with you? Because some of you, you go to your spouse and you're saying, the Lord has said we go in this direction. Or you go to a place that he will show us. You're like, where is it? When will we arrive? When are we coming back? And then Abram is like, um... I want to assume Abraham had to keep consulting. Even to know what he was going to pack, he had to keep consulting. I want to imagine that as he was getting ready, he was not just getting ready blindly. Because it says to a place that I will show you, I would imagine. And you see, he didn't just move the way he was. Aksema, okay, wale wote wanaitanishwa na jina yangu, wakaya nyuma yangu. Tunaenda safari. Usibebe chochote. tunaenda api. No, they carried things. And he carried people. Actually, it says that Lot also followed him. Lot was, a Lot was a beneficiary. Lot did not receive the instruction. Bona sifiri. Lot did not receive the instruction, but he followed. He was joy. Alikuwa meketi vya kona, uu jamaa mesikia sauti na mambia. Wacha ni mfuwate kwa sababu. Uyo anajua kenya nafanya. You know, Lot later, we of course know that Lot later became a landlord. Alienda akapati wa mashamba, plot mafuta mafuta mahali, akapata aka... In other words, what I'm trying to say is, as you continue to listen to the instruction of God, to the voice of God, that there are people that are banking on your obedience. 
So the fact that we are seated and refusing to, or not refusing, okay, for some of us it is refusing, for some of us it is just ignoring, for some of us it is disobedience to the voice of God, or some of us it is refusing to depend on the voice of God. We, are, we know, I know this route. Ukienda hivi roundabout, second exit na kuanga hii. But God is saying, no, take, a, take the second exit. Let your eyes be open. Let your ears also be open so that you may know what direction you're supposed to take. I'm telling you to go this way. For some of us, the instruction is not always... You see, most times when we're asking God for instruction, we think God is only telling us instruction for get up and go. Amka, twende, fanya, nini, kimbia. No, there are times that God will tell you stop. Do you remember in the journey for the children of Israel? When the Lord spoke to them and said to them, be, stand still. That must have been the craziest instruction they have ever had. These were people that had been slaves all their lives. They, nobody had ever told them, stand still. Unless they were being told, it's time to be counted, stand still. And mostly they would be told, maybe lie down or kneel down or something like that. So somebody is telling them, just relax. You shall see the deliverance. They're like, what is that instruction? Relax. Oh, oh. Somebody give us a dictionary. That was not a familiar thing. They had never had relax all their lives. Are we, are we together? Because these were slaves. All of a sudden, they have gotten in the most unlikely place where it is the Red Sea ahead of them as far as the eye can see. It's just the Red Sea. They are at the beach. It was actually a beach experience. All right? So they're at the beach. They're just standing there. Behind, as they see behind, Pharaoh has declared, bring 600 of our best chariots, war chariots. They are following these people. Artillery that has never been used before in Egypt. They have brought it forward. And the best 600 of... You know 600 chariots is not a joke. Let's even assume that the soldiers were only one per chariot. That's not a joke. And then it's not a kawaida chariot. No. It was 600 of their best war chariots. So you can imagine there is a cloud of dust in the desert. It is gathering. They are pursuing the children of Israel. And this guy, the voice of God has said to them, What? Stand still. That sounds crazy. But to tell you the truth, it would have been crazy for them to move when God has said stand still. The worst place for you to ever be as a believer is to be where God was or to be where God is not. That would mean where God was is that we were together with God in this place. Then God has moved to a new place and I am still left in the place where I was. That is a tragic thing for a believer. Because I'm like, tukiwa hapa na mungu tulikuwa tunafanya majabu. Vitu zilikuwa zina happen. Manze tulikuwa tunaomba, tunafunga. Majabu zilikuwa zina tendeka. Watu walikuwa napona. Hapa. Unashindwa ni nini metendeka? Mungu wali, alienda sasa pale pengine. And he's calling you to go with him. But you are just left in this place. That is where God was. But also to be where God is not. To mean you have left God behind. And you have ran to a place where you think is the best for you. A new level is what we call. So that... It is important, beloved, that we are not so attracted to the shiny life that we move and run and run to that shiny life, leaving God behind. The shiny life is good. The new life is good. The new levels is great. The new lifting is amazing. But there is nothing that is so amazing that you had better have it at the cost of not being with God. Because you need the in-ear instruction. It's like the GPS signal. The voice of God is like the GPS signal for a believer. Telling you, go. Turn right. Turn left. Stop. Take a roundabout. If you're like me, every time you're on the road and you're using Google, it will sometimes you have gotten to a place. I cannot navigate up a hill to save my life. So, I'm going to go up a hill. Mahali, mahali, tuko. Na, Uhuru Park. Juhi kinifikisha Uhuru Park naweza nikajileta Zimaman. So naeka Uhuru Park. Inakuja inanileta, lakini sasa inaniambia. Iyo inajua mi nataka kuingia Uhuru Park. Nataka kuingia Uhuru Park. So inaniambia, turn right, turn right, turn right. Juhi nimepita, saa mi inakuja Zimaman saa nisha pata njia yangu. Sama turn right, take a roundabout, make a U-turn, adi unaizima. You see, for some of us, that's what we are constantly doing. The voice of God is in our ear, but the difference is he knows where we're supposed to be going. We don't. So he's telling you, listen, you're going to a land that I will show you. This was my plan. All of a sudden, you've thrown God out. Like, I, so unazima, unazima sauti ya mungu. That means, wengine unacha kuja kanisa, unasema, hi, your fellowship. No, your home cell, wananikanyanganga migu sana. Wanashinda wakiingilia maisha angu. Kwa sababu, se leader wanakupigia tu kukuliza, squeeze ya tukuoni. All of a sudden, you may say, I beg the fellowship, I'm going to go to the house. Hey, what's 
wewe ndio unajua kenye iko kwako alafu sasa unasema kwa sababu unajua watu wakikuja wataanza kuuliza wewe oh, nani tumeona akipita pita na hapo <laughs> so you have you, you are shut, what you're doing is that you're shutting the voice of the people the voice of god through his people because there are leaders that have been placed over us we're supposed to honor them it is for our good you're coming here and you're like oh pastor kuna kuna kitu tu ni kama kwa kuna wacha nikae nyumbani nibarikiwe na huyu wa tv kwanza sande kama mbili roho yangu ipone oh okay that could be true but highly likely you might be running away turning off the voice of god because god is telling you no turn right turn right what are you doing there is a cliff there turn right stop stop you just you just want progress beloved let's not be so addicted to the running to the moving on next level give me the next mountain give me the next level god onward onward sometimes god just wants to tell you yo okay fine we'll go to that mountain but you need to chill your heart needs to relax you just need to recover something that we are learning right now you you just need to replenish just take some time God is telling you okay it's fine we are going to go to that place that I am the one who told you that place just come down just relax let us stay in this place for a bit several times we find Jesus used to speak to the disciples and tell them come away with me they are not going to do ministry he's just going to chill with them and give them stories i would assume it just says he used to tell them come away with me i don't know what the stories of Jesus would look like with the disciples maybe he'd be telling them what he was doing that day when he was lost at the temple at 12 <laughs> I don't know. But several times he will tell them come away with me. Come and chill with me. Let's take some time because this was my idea. I'm the one that has called you into this life. Bana sifiwe. If you look at what life is and you look at the greatness of God as we were beginning as we were worshiping and singing just God is great. If you look at God as great and you esteem him as that, I beloved, you will realize I am so small I can't figure life out on my own. I have to constantly live a life of God, you're the one that is calling me, you're the one that will show me. Where are you God? Are you out oh, pamoja? Okay. Tuko pamoja bado. Constantly that's your life everyday ordinary life it will not be a one time thing it's not a thing for special occasions where you're saying i want to declare a 21 day fast because i want to hear what god is saying about this situation because that will mean there are other situations if that is, if you only do that at some times if that is the only time you esteem the voice of god that would mean there are other situations that you don't open yourself up to the instruction of god is there a thing in our lives that we don't need god's instruction on absolutely none including the matatu that you're going to take at the road in the morning you need that instruction but you don't get up in the morning and you say okay i'm declaring a two day fast so i'm not going to work in the morning for two days you're calling your boss you're telling them i'm not coming to work i am seeking the lord on what matatus i shall take this week i shall come in from wednesday none of us does that we are depending on his voice constantly we are walking with him we are running with him as god is saying go to this place we are going to this place together with him i stand there and i say nilisikia kwa sauti kameniambia mhm wonderful keep doing that for every other area of your life so that there are no things that are sometimes for those of you that are in business somebody will come to you a client and 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 you'll hear the in ear instruction of god telling you let that on pass god do you know how broke i am This is you're like get behind me Satan this is the doing of the Lord it is marvelous in my sight and you grab it and then you start complaining you're like kwani kwani God this client he has refused with my money nimechukua loan nimefanya biashara yake sasa amekataa nayo unaanza kukumbushwa unakumbuka sema lakini shetani ninakufunga with all your negativity i denounce you i renounce you i disassociate with me you, if only we learn to listen to the voice of God How do we listen to the voice of God? Bishop took us through a series in the book of Habakkuk and he said it throughout to the end. The just shall live by faith. The just shall live the just shall live by faith. So, how do you live then by faith? Because that would mean that my 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 provision, my providence, it comes from God. That is what it means to live by faith. That every morning when I wake up, I am looking to God. I am looking to him alone. When we were growing up, my mom used to tell us, you cannot just wake up in the morning and get out of bed and run to the world. Where are you going? 
you have been sleeping for six hours or for four hours, some of us for 12 hours, God bless you. Some of us have been used for whatever period of time. But for the time you've been sleeping, you don't know what has been happening around. Outside your door, you don't know what has been happening. Even inside your body, you don't know what has been happening throughout. But there's one that doesn't sleep or slumber. He was up the whole night. He will never sleep. He will never slumber. He's constantly on. He knows what is happening inside and outside. That is the person you consult. Because if you're going to get to a place that is going to show you, you have to constantly keep checking. And you have to constantly keep asking yourself, am I, am I okay? Are we together? Is GPS signal still on or is it, still, is it lost? Because let me tell you, beloved, the most tragic thing for a believer, the thing you should shudder and fear the most, is not the devil. The devil, we are actually not told to flee from him. We are told to resist him. Ephesians chapter 6, from verse 10. Resist him. All right? Take on the full arm of God that you may be able to, to resist, to withstand all the wiles of the enemy, his strategies and all. That's not the thing you fear the most. The most tragic thing, the thing you should dread the most, is to lose the voice of God in your ear. Because where do you go? How do you turn? Who do you, who do you know how to build with? How to stop? How to start? Like the children of Israel, imagine, just imagine for a minute, if they were standing there, and they are so anxious, and these were not two people, this was an entire army, not, well, army, but they were an entire nation. And they are standing there. So there is Moses and a few people of the leaders in the front. Now in Guinea, when you see Viongozi, see Nini, see responsible, ni wale tu watu, mbele mbele tu, lakini wako huku mbele sawa, wako hapo tu. But then there is an entire nation all the way back. Maybe from here, the nation imenda all the way across and across and going all the way back to cooperative. Ama pale karibu TRM. That's a crowd of people. So there is people that are at the back. And they are wondering, why are we stopping? Why have we stopped? Why, why have we stopped? When the armies come, it is us they are going to get through fast. Can you move, guys? Move! Then they don't know in the front they have gotten to the Red Sea. They cannot progress. And the Lord has told them the most absurd thing. Stand still. Like, Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> you know? Last Sunday, a speaker shared, and he said that when they got to the Red Sea, the Bible says, and the Lord sent a mighty strong wind, strong east wind, and it came and pulled back the water, and it pulled it back the whole night. So I would assume that the whole night, <laughs> there was no progress. They're just there like, part, 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 quickly, part, quickly, they're coming, just part, part, part. I'm sure there were a few children of Israel that were tempted to just jump into the water. Just let's start running. Because sometimes it seems absurd when the Lord tells you, stop here. Camp. Don't do this. Don't go ahead. I feel like, oh God, my time is ready. Oh, I need a husband. Oh, I need a husband, my time. God, I'll just take this one and run with them. Okay. <laughs> run with them. Oh. Run with them. Sometimes the instruction of God might not make sense. When you read the story of Abram, throughout the journey from here, 12, all the way going on to the time when the Lord will reveal himself again to him in verse 15 and say to him, I am your shield and your exceedingly great reward. God was reassuring him. Because sometimes you're walking in this journey, it's not always easy, oh. Not always. But you can't afford to jump and get your own solution. Like, I, I'm sure if God were here, this is what he would do. Unakimbia na weo kamtu, ama na weo kamuingine. Unaingia kwa biashara zingine zenye. Let me say this in closing. <coughs> when we were in high school, uh, in Form 4, guys, um, the, the leakage came. There was leakage, right? Um, uh, <laughs> um, I, maybe you should go off air. <laughs> no, I'm playing. <laughs> I'm just joking. Um, there was leakage in high school. At some point, when I was in Form 1, there was leakage in Form 4. Of course, there was there leakage even in Form 4, okay? But when I was in Form 1, so I had just given my life to Jesus. I was a new believer. I'd, I'd accepted the Lord in first time, so that time the leakage has come. And I was looking up to the brothers that had done the follow-up for us. And I'm looking to them and, um, you know, I know that they will stand firm. They will not do anything. But lo and behold... When the leakage comes, these two actually call it gruel. I don't know why. Gruel is that porridge that has been fermented. I don't know why they used to call it that. But anyway, I'm like, hey, gruel. In the, 
one of the believers, the one that we used to know as one of our dads, you know there are many dads in the CU, one of the dads, kwa cubicle yake ndi uyo grueliko inapikiwa. So, me, I was going there just to follow up like I usually went. Kanambia, hey, cheki, eh, imwezi, follow up, utaku unenda kwa, utaku unakuja. I'm like, I felt so abandoned. I forgave him at the encounter. <laughs> I'm playing. Anyway, um, I remember when this one time I confronted him. I don't know how, but I just felt like I had the strength and I went to him and asked, hey, brother, so and so, why are you, why are you partaking in the gruel banner? It's like, no, 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 no. You know, as a believer, I have to be very wise. And you see, I'm a new believer, so I'm learning. I'm, I'm an open book, me, I'm being taught. So I was like, hey, let me sit down, hey, hey, teach me, teach me. I said, you have to be very wise. You know the Bible says, and I was like, hey, and I opened my book, I'm ready to take notes. And says, it says, call to me and I will show you great and hidden things which your eyes have not seen. You see, that exam, no one has seen it. But my brother, the Lord, we have called to him and he has revealed to us. And for about a period of a few, a few terms, actually, I, I, I was for that gospel. I had believed it. <laughs> I, I, was, I, was, I was very... Um, but you see, later, the person that came to undo, Apostle Juma actually came to school and he was preaching to us in, second, in Form 2. And as he was preaching just before the Form 4s did the exam, he was saying, you see, he addressed it as if he knew about it. And he said, you see, the thing with us is that we are so addicted to our feet moving. One foot being in front of the other. We are so addicted to that, we don't know what it means to wait on God. Because waiting on God is no small thing. That's why scripture says, they that wait upon the Lord shall do what? Shall renew their strength. Constantly. You have to, you know, you sh as you wait on God, you renew your strength. As you wait on God, something is happening. Your mark timing is like you're generating electricity as you're standing there. I'm renewing my strength. But then it says, when they finally start making progress, I'm just paraphrasing, all right? When they finally start making progress, they shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not grow weary, they shall walk and not faint. Oh, that you would learn just to wait upon the Lord. How do you wait upon the Lord? With his word, with listening to his voice. That if he says stop, you stop. If he says go, you go. If he says move, you move. That the thing you should dread the most every morning, every noontime, every evening, is to wait and listen to the voice of God. God, are we still together? God, what are you saying? Because if the just shall live by faith, then faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Then it means the just shall live by hearing the word, the voice, the rhema of God. So I must spend time with God. I must take some time to hear God are we together. In his word, it's not going to come from anywhere else. You can go to fellowships and you must come for prayers and you must fast and you must do all those things. That's amazing. But nothing can take the place of sitting down alone, quietly, with God and his word. Because as you open the word, he releases his voice in your ear, telling you this is how you turn, this is what you do, this is who you build with. You cannot afford to lose the voice of God in your ear. Because if Abraham had not followed that voice constantly to be, wait to be shown by God, we would not be here. Lot will not have gotten that plot to start with. Then the rest of us would have followed. But blessed be God, because constantly, every day, even Jesus while he was on earth, his ear was open to the instruction of God, the Father that had sent him. How much more for us believers? How much more? Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your word. We thank you that you've spoken to us. And we pray that, dear God, by the power of your Holy Spirit, you will continue to cause these words to unfold inside of us. That long after we've left this place, we'll continue to receive a new light of what you're saying. And that we'll not lose you, that we'll not miss you, that we'll hear your voice inside of our hearts.